Australia take on Pakistan, second semi final of this 2021 T20 World Cup. Exciting game, and we are back here at Time Out with Sports Adda to talk all about that game. Pakistan Unstoppable, Akil. Unstoppable Pakistan. Five five games on the trot, uh, tough wins. All their players playing consistently. Consistency in Pakistan cricket is is not a word that has been regularly used, but to see that consistency and see their team doing well is nice to see in world cricket. It's been refreshing to watch Pakistan play, honestly. Uh, and, and and credit to the the Pakistan captain who after that first game, remember said, let's change the reputation of of Pakistan cricket. Uh, and it's been good to see how you know they've had different match winners step up each time. We'll talk about all of that later. But you know, it's also good to see Australia you know make the semi-final of a World Cup. It just doesn't feel like an ICC competition if Australia don't make the semis or the final. So 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 big game for Australia as well. And we'll we'll see why a little later in the show. Big game for Australia, like you mentioned, and there are lots of things to talk about. But before we proceed. Uh, there's also something exciting that Time Out with Sports Adda is doing for the semi-finals and the finals. So we again, uh, like we like we we've, we've been giving out brightly signed merchandise to so, to contest winners. So we have we are running this contest for the semi-finals and finals, and we'll be asking a question. I'll be asking a question uh, in between the show when while we are talking about uh, various tags and matchups. And Arun, like I mentioned, cannot answer the question. He'll be just uh, joining me to ask the question. But um, whoever wants to win Brightly signed merchandise, uh, you you just have to subscribe to the channel and answer with your answer in the comment section. The the lucky winners will get a will get some goodies uh, which are personally signed by Brightly. So it's going to be a very very interesting phase of the tournament. Very very interesting for fans like us to watch and comment with the answers. Yes, so that's the contest, Arun. Uh, before before we start and talking about matchups, very interesting matchup between the coaches. Huh? The head to head Hayden goes up against his old pal uh, Justin Langer. That's that's an interesting matchup. Both of them will be now trying to gun and gun against each other and trying to create strategies. So that's that's one contest uh, not many have spoken about. No, and I I, I read a quote somewhere Akil, yesterday uh, where you know where it was said that you know. I don't know if it was Lang or Hayden who said, uh, we are in constant exchange through text messages and all that. But for those three hours, I don't know who Langer is or who Hayden is. So so it's going to be really fun to watch. Two opening partners, two of the best openers of all time in Test cricket uh, and two Australia's best of all time. Uh, going to be interesting to see how, uh, you know, how who outwits the other. No, Hayden. The, Hayden's a, yeah. a very different personality, Akil, from the days we saw him, you know, charging down to a fast bowler. I've yeah. spent a, I've spent a few days in his company in the last last month or so. Completely different to what he was, let's say, ten years ago, fifteen years ago. Mm, and whatever he's been doing, I think it's it's worked with this Pakistan team. They have managed to find success. But uh, Langer's Langer was in a little bit of dilemma before this tournament, if you remember. So. Australia doing well is important for him to keep some consistency in his job. There were murmurs about his job, about how the players were unhappy, and there were a lot of talk about how his performance as a coach was there. So his old mate usually would have supported him, but now he's going up against him. So very very crucial that way for the Australian coach also to get some momentum uh, if Australia reaches the final. Having watched Langer Akil uh, in Australia the last couple of summers. When I when I think about how Langa operates, it reminds me of parents back in the nineties or you know, it probably in our generations. He's so passionate about the game. He treats it like his, you know, he just wants the best for 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 the Australian team, and that's that passion, that commitment is perhaps understood. Uh, players perhaps think it's too demanding of them, but you know, it's a different generation, Akil. You know, like I mentioned. Mm. Our parents were so committed, had so much interest in our our betterment that they'd give it everything. You know, they'd even pick up a scale and and cane you at times. They'd scold you, uh, it, but you know, at the end of it, the motive was that you get you get better, you become be- better people. Uh, it's the same with Langer. The commitment, the passion, 
you can almost feel it when he's talking you know the commitment you can all, almost sense it so i really want australia to do well i really want australia to do well at least for langer's sake okay sounds good then uh, what what are the matchups what are the interesting stats that we can look forward to i know the matchup that i am looking forward to and we'll you we'll come to that when you when you show the stats but mitchell stark bowling to the pakistani openers arun that is the contest that is the contest that i'm really really looking forward to uh, the pakistan openers are so crucial to their team we've we've highlighted the kind of impact that they have had uh, on the team but mitchell stark and hazelwood challenging them oh here's here's the stat arun uh, how how these numbers stack up like these are among the best ever right you know this is mitchell stark in t20is against pakistan over the years uh, uh, astonishing numbers but but here's the thing akil you know when i talk about you know while i was preparing for this game uh, yeah the first thing i actually looked at was you know what 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 has been that that stark weapon and stark weapon has been his yorkers and you know i'm trying to get some footage of you know stark's yorkers to brendan mccallum in the 2015 world cup Uh, yes. Ben Stokes in the 2019 World Cup. In this World Cup, we've seen so a couple of Yorkers. So, so that's a contest I'm looking for. You rightly picked it. You know, uh, Mitchell Stark's first over to the two openers, or the first and third over to the two openers. That's going to be crucial. That's that's really going to be crucial. That's going to set the tone. Yeah, because Pakistan have not really been tested when their openers have failed. uh each time there is there is an asif ali who's come and he was won a game there is a shoaib malik who's got a very quick 50 but when their openers have not scored some runs that is that is the time when pakistan have not been tested yet and during that in a semi final stage against a very very good bowling attack uh, very there, there are probably the fifth bowler they australia is lacking a fifth bowler but this bowling attack is very tough and which mitchell stark will be very very motivated he'll be coming in charging in uh no freebies there no down the leg side hopefully no wides it will be all in swingers uh, to the right handers so it, it's going to be fun and starks stocks starks always known to ra- raise his game come the big games akil come the semi final mm-hmm. final so so yeah i mean starks a crucial one for me uh yeah the, just want to you know mention quickly the head to head between these two teams akil uh, and yeah. i'll tell you why uh it, it's 13-9 in favor of pakistan overall but in the uae it's 6-2 it's it's pretty lopsided uh, wow. but here's also their the the overall record of these two teams uh, look at what pakistan have done we mentioned this in the past akil 27-14 yeah. in the uae for pakistan but look at the bottom line you know it's in fine print there pakistan have won their last 16 t20is in the uae they are on an absolute mm-hmm. roller coaster yeah we we spoke about this stat I, i remember during the afghanistan versus pakistan match where there was one streak unbeaten streak that was going to get over and pakistan have just continued from that so it's an amazing stat like we always knew that pakistan loved playing in the ua in the 80s and the 90s uh, sharja was something that they always always managed to find a way to win uh, but this is another another fort that they're building here so it, it's very impressive the kind of lineup the kind of numbers that they are putting together yeah absolutely right uh, so so pakistan will will feel we are on a roll you know it's just a confidence level when you're stepping onto the ground just feeling good there's not you're not burdened by stuff by stuff uh, by external factors so so pakistan i think will be feeling good couple of other numbers akil quickly we'll we'll rush through this the record in the semi finals of world cups you know I I can cannot believe Australia have not won this title. Uh yeah. Pakistan obviously won it once but but here's what Australia has done uh, in in the semi-finals. Three semi-finals they won only once which yeah. and eventually they lost to England in that final. Uh these are numbers that Australia will not like and these are so unlike Australia, you know. Come the semi-final and final of World Cups they're expected to they usually boss these kind of matches. So this is another number that Australia will be looking to rectify. Pakistan have done okay. They've done they've done a fifty fifty, so that's all right. Uh, yeah. We'll also look at what Australia have done in each of the World Cups, Akil. You know that's the T Twenty World Cups particularly. That's before been a surprise. Before we jump onto that, before we jump onto that stat, Arun, the only factor if I am an Australian fan that I'll be looking at is the one semi final that they did win in a T Twenty World Cup was against Pakistan. If you remember a magical magical evening when Michael Hussey 
just got those Finished amazing off. runs in, in that last over. He got those eighteen odd runs. So that's an encouraging sign. Maybe a sign that that will be helpful for Australian fans. Uh, it'll be it'll be something that remains in the back of your mind, isn't it? And I, I, I hope JL remembers that. I hope Justin Langer or somebody in the Australian setup remembers that and just gets Michael Assi on the phone line for a quick couple of words. Steve Smith was playing in that match, if you remember. Steve Smith batted uh, in the middle order and he was a part of that squad. I was looking at the scorecard there. So, that is, those are positive memories that uh, we know Langer is a mastermind. So, he'll be looking at revisiting those uh, revisiting those memories, uh, revisiting those, getting those mental disintegration scars back. Langer is known for that. So, I, I, I think Langer's changed, Akhil. No more mental disintegration. He's become a monk now. Uh, uh, so, so, he'll be looking at the positive aspects, you know, all, all the positivity. But you're right. I mean, I hope somebody gets Michael Assi on that phone call for a chat. But here's what Australia have done in the, in the T20 World Cup, Akhil. They've been underachievers. And we seldom talk about Australia being underachievers. Uh, mm. One final, you know, obviously when they lost to England, uh, they've also, you know, had a couple of semi-finals. But look at the last two, Akhil. Second mm. round in 2014, Super 10 stage, which is the second stage in 2016. Not mm. where Australia belong. They belong in the semi-finals and final. Mm. And they're, they're a proud, proud... Uh... They are very, very proud people. They like their cricket. They follow their cricketers. So, a lot of good media also who write about cricket there. So, this is this is not a stand that will go very well with them. They've also lost a lot of series against India who are, who are their arch rivals in test cricket. So, they will want to win this title and again get there at the top, you know. So, yeah. these stats will be alarming for the Australian management. Shifting, shifting focus to Pakistan, Akhil. Uh, before before we get on to Pakistan, Arun, like I mentioned, uh, I, we, we are running this contest uh, at Time Out with Sports Adda. So, I want to throw in the question here for, for viewers to come and answer so that they can they can get a chance to win those Bread Key merchandise. Uh, it's a simple question. Again, please do not answer. Please send in your uh, answers in the comment section. Uh, Mohammad Rizwan, how many sixes has he hit in this T20 World Cup? How many sixes has Mohammad Rizwan hit in this 2021 T20 World Cup? Very, very simple question. Uh, please subscribe to our channel and write in your answers in the comment section. And a few lucky ones will get those uh, Bretley merchandise like I mentioned. Uh, so that's a very simple question. Arun, I know, already has the answers. But uh, I'm going to be telling Arun to now we'll, we'll get on to the other stacks and not give us the answers here. I'll give a clue though. It's a multiple of five. I won't give you anything <laughs> okay. more. I'll give you a clue. It's a multiple of five. But but hey, look look at what's happened. You know, why are Pakistan on the roll again? Uh, yeah. It's not just... It, it's the openers who are firing. We'll talk about them. But but look at who who's won the man of the matches for in, in each of their games. Uh, I mentioned earlier briefly, you know, that every... They, they've been different players who put their hands up. And there's nothing more reflective of that than this table. You know, who's who's won the man of the match in their five wins? You know, first game was Shaheen Shah Afridi against India. Second game was Harris Rauf against uh, New Zealand. Asif Ali in the third game against Afghanistan. Mohamed Rizwan, who, ju who just spoke about him against Namibia. And Shoy Malik recently against Scotland. So, five different players have won the player of the match awards uh, in in this World Cup. So, that that that's reflective of the fact that while they've de depended on the openers, it's not necessarily been the openers. Other players have contributed useful per performances to help the team win. Mm, very, very impressive. And we spoke about it uh, in, in for the New Zealand side also, around where each of the players was making a contribution. So, it's nice to see that Pakistan are throwing up so many match winners. Obviously, the openers uh, have been very crucial for runs. But uh, this is a this is a very different kind of Pakistan setup. It's not dependent on just one or two key players to win their games. So impressive, whatever their coaching staff, uh, Vernon Philander also has joined them just before the T20 World Cup. So whatever their staff has done, management has done, it, it's worked wonders for them. Very impressive for Pakistan cricket fans to see. Yeah, the one name that's missing on that list, Akil. I mean, that that's a bit of a surprise as well. Uh, is Babar Azam? You know, and you know he's he's got. Tons of runs. He's got he's got four fifties, I think, all the way in the competition, uh, and he's also got a good record against Australia. Mm. Barbara Sims got an impressive record against Australia. Look at this. 
six matches. He's got four half centuries against them. Uh, mm. it, this is all T20s against Australia. But the worrying factor, Akhil, you know, is is Babar Azam's strike rate uh, against a team like Australia, which is which is so aggressive, who play an aggressive brand of cricket. Uh, yeah. Will it be okay if Babar Azam continues to score at 125, 120, or does he need to up his gears in this game? That's the question that needs an answer. Mm, again, he's been he's been in a position where he doesn't really have to chase huge totals, uh, totals of one eighty, two hundred, two twenty. So I think he's doing his role to perfection, just keeping one end up, making sure wickets are not falling early, and then whenever he needs to hit a boundary, he's managed to find that. Which has been the major, major difference. You know, wherever he needs needs to cope up, find that boundary. Uh, he's he's doing that. I, I'm I'll be very interested to see how he plays the leg spin today, Arun. Uh, Adam Zampa has been bowling beautifully. He's not he's not like Shane Warne where he's going to be uh, bowling a lot of overs in the test cricket, test matches. But he's bowling beautifully, and uh, him bowling to Babar Azam is going to be. I hope he gets to bowl those. At least a couple of overs, if not all the four overs, but at least two overs when Babar Azam is batting, that is going to be real fun. If Babar Azam has stayed that long, then Australia are in trouble. Mm, Let me tell point. you that. If he if he is good seen point. through Stark, Cummins, Hazelwood, Australia are in serious trouble. Uh, but but yeah, I mean, completely agree. Adam Zampa has been bowling like a magician, absolute magic. Uh, so yeah, that that be a good contest if ever that materializes. But I also want to talk about you know Pakistan's bowlers, Akil. Sorry, uh, there's one weak link in that, and I mentioned this in our previous shows as well. The yeah. two quick Shaheen Afridi and Harris Harris of sorry Harris Harris Rofs means sensational. Yeah. But look at look at Hasan Ali Hassan at Ali. the bottom of that table. You know mm-hmm. the economy rate of 8.5 when the other other couple of bowlers are going at six under seven runs and over. And then there's you know his average of thirty thirty two point six. So so that's that's the weak link for me. But Pakistan will yeah. believe he'll show up on the big day. Hmm, interesting. You picked up on this. He's he's again been a match winner for them for for a while. Uh, I think they just like the attitude that he brings to the entire team. He runs in uh, bowls whenever they want him to. So they'll be hoping you're right. He he comes good for them. Uh, but but there's also one interesting stat uh, I wanted I wanted to take your thoughts on. Uh, you you put that stat together about the finishers in both the teams. Uh, when the tournament started, there was a lot of talk about uh, Glenn Maxwell being one guy who's in form in the Australian lineup. Not much was being spoken about about Asif Ali uh, doing what he can. But that is an interesting matchup also that you put together, isn't it? Look at the look at the strike rates, Akhil. I mean, look, I mean, we've seen what wow. Asif Ali has done in the competition. Um, he's kind of blown away opponents in the last last two three matches. So, so Asif Ali is one one to watch out for. How how easy it will be against a Mitchell Starks two overs at the end. Yeah. That's that's going to be really really interesting to watch out. Uh, Cummins and Hazelwood, he probably will still figure out because of the angle. Uh, he kind of mm. makes room for himself, but again, Stark. It's going to be really, really difficult. But Maxwell's got impressive numbers again this year, Akhil. We saw him in the Indian T20 League, batted beautifully. Uh, he he took on the spinners, Akhil. Uh, yeah. That was a more that was a more impressive thing for me. So so these two are, are players you you need to watch out for as well. Maxwell in a knockout game is probably the most dangerous batter uh, in the in the entire lineup, according to me. Uh, because you just don't know what he's capable of. Uh, he's if he's chasing and uh, Australia are down, you still cannot write the team off because this guy has the capacity to change a game. He's not batted too long, too much, Arun, in the last couple of matches because Australia. He's been zero been... not out in the last couple of games, Akil. Zero not out. Correct. So he'll be really gunning to gunning to try and give this a real go. Uh, he's too good a player to not score runs uh, in the form that he is. So. But thankfully for them, David Warner has scored runs, but Maxwell still the absolute key. Absolutely right. Uh, Warner, Warner, Finch at the top. If we look at the lineup just quickly. I don't foresee any changes in Australia. Uh, pretty yeah. much, I think set in stone. Uh, and no, you 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 don't think there would be a change there. I think this is pretty much the eleven that will take the field. I mean, people will ask if Steve Smith belongs there. Answer is there is still a role for him, and I think Australia will continue yeah. with this. Uh, if we can quickly talk about the Pakistan as well, like Pakistan eleven as well, Akhil. Uh, 
I can don't see too many. I don't see a reason for them to change. I know I no mentioned Hassan Ali has had you know a poor tournament, but why would they change it now? No reason for them to change. Uh, Fakhar Zaman again, he he's not somebody who set the tournament on fire. But we all remember what he's done in one final for Pakistan that they won in in an ICC tournament. We know what he's capable of. So I don't see any changes here. Also, uh, before before again, I throw in uh, the question to you, uh, where uh, I ask you to pick your favorite for today's match. I am going to just reiterate that the contest that Time Out with Sports Sada we are running here is a simple one. All you have to do is answer the question. How many sixes has Mohammad Rizwan hit in this T20 World Cup? Uh, please send in your answers in the comment section, and you will get a chance to win Bradley merchandise. That's my question. It's a multiple That's... of five. <laughs> okay, Arun has thrown in the hint here, which is very very helpful. Uh, please please take that hint and answer answer the question here. Uh, now, Arun, the tough question: Who who are you picking as favorites today? Who are you backing? I want Australia to win. I really want Australia to win. Even I want Australia to win, considering uh, the opponents which are there in the other semi-final. Both the teams. Uh... Hang, hang on, sorry, I may I may have got this wrong, Akil. I I, I take back my hint. Uh, it's a multiple of four, not five. Rizwan okay. sixes <laughs> is a multiple of four. Okay, so we are we are allowing you the chance to change this this answer. But not your other answer. Uh, Australia, you have picked as a team that you want to win. I am also going to be backing Australia simply because an England versus Australia final will be will be really really uh, a prelude to the Ashes which are coming up, if I might call it. So it's an interesting one. Australia favorites for me also. I I like the way that they are coming together, and uh, statistically you know, five wins in a row. There is there is a way where you have to falter. So. Let's see, exciting match, exciting contest, uh, lots of exciting things happening here. Uh, we'll be back again at time out with Sports Sadda before the final, and we'll preview the final. We'll have another contest there for the final also. So please do stay tuned on and join us for uh, watching the games.